During the Triassic period, before the first dinosaur stepped foot in North America, the top predator was Carnifex carolinensis, the Carolina Butcher. Although it may have looked vaguely like a dinosaur, this fearsome carnivore was instead a distant relative of crocodilians, and many aspects of its anatomy have profound implications regarding the evolution of their shared clade Crocodilomorpha. Carnifex's fossils originate from the Pekin Formation in North Carolina. The site is 231 million years old, dating to the late Carnian Age of the Triassic period. Thus far, only two Carnifex specimens have been discovered. The holotype was excavated in 2004 and consists of an incomplete skull, a humerus, and a few ribs and vertebrae. The second specimen is nothing more than a partial humerus. While incomplete, what is known about Carnifex has provided exciting insights into the early evolution of Crocodilomorpha, changing prior assumptions about the emergence of the clade. Crocodilomorpha is a subclade within Pseudosuchia, which consists of crocodilians and all their extinct relatives. During the first period of the Mesozoic era, the Triassic period, Pseudosuchians were even more diverse than their close cousins, the dinosaurs. Some of the first crocodilomorphs were small predators called Sphenosuchians. They do not form a true clade, but were instead ancestral to all later members of Crocodilomorpha. In stark contrast to their only remaining descendants, Sphenosuchians were agile, active animals, and may have even been bipedal. Crocodilomorpha belongs to a branch of Pseudosuchia called Loricata. The other Loricatans, colloquially called Rauisuchians, were all large terrestrial predators. Much like Sphenosuchians, Rauisuchians do not form a true clade, but are an evolutionary grade which led to the derived Loricatans, the Crocodilomorphs. However, there were no fossils which marked the drastic transition from the huge Rauisuchians to the tiny Sphenosuchians. That was until the description of Carnifex in 2015. This new crocodilomorph was far larger than the Sphenosuchians and was placed right at the base of Crocodilomorpha, bridging this critical gap in the lineage which eventually led to the crocodilians of today. The skull of the holotype was at least half a meter long and its total body length is estimated to have been 3 meters. While much larger than most of the later Triassic crocodilomorphs or any other terrestrial predator found in the Pekin Formation, this is still much smaller than the apex predators in most other late Triassic ecosystems, such as the basal loricodon Sorosuchus. However, the holotype specimen was not fully grown when it died. Its neural arches are unfused, a trait typical of juvenile Pseudosuchians. Examination of their bone histology has also found both Carnifex specimens were still growing rapidly when they died. Based on comparisons with other Triassic Loricotans, a fully grown Carnifex could have been as large as the famous Rauisuchian Postosuchus. Before the discovery of the Carolina Butcher, it was assumed crocodilomorphs first shrank in size and then acquired their distinguishing features. Instead, they initially retained an ecology similar to the other Loricotans of the time. As Carnifex's skull is not complete, it is unclear exactly what it looked like. Depending on which early crocodilomorphs are used to fill in the gaps, the shape can change drastically. In any event, it is clear the skull was slender and elongate, resembling the shape of the smaller Sphenosuchians more than the bulkier skulls of the Rauisuchids, the Rauisuchians most closely related to the crocodilomorphs. However, like the Rauisuchids, the Carolina Butcher's skull was heavily ornamented, even possessing a raised rostrum in front of its eyes. Given the immature nature of the holotype, the skulls of adult Carnifex were likely even more visually striking. Another basal characteristic was the shape of its antorbital fenestra, the opening before the orbits. It was large and elongated, resembling a larger version of Postosuchus's antorbital fenestra more than those of other early crocodilomorphs. However, unlike any of these other Pseudosuchians, the rear edge of Carnifex's antorbital fenestra was vertical rather than slanted. Much like many other terrestrial carnivorous pseudosuchians, as well as most meat-eating dinosaurs, the teeth of the Carolina Butcher were xiphodont, meaning they were compressed, recurved, and serrated. Much like the Sphenosuchian Dromacosuchus, Carnifex had a notch between its maxilla and premaxilla, which likely evolved to accommodate the enlarged fourth tooth present in numerous crocodilomorphs. Carnifex's humerus is fairly small, and due to similarities with the humerus of the bipedal Postosuchus, it seems the Carolina Butcher was also bipedal.
although it may have retained the ability to switch to a four-legged stance. Since the Svenosuchians are also thought to have been bipeds, this seems to be the ancestral state of Crocodilomorpha. Today's crocodilians have since returned to a purely quadrupedal stance, which is far from their only evolutionary reversal. While they and most other living reptiles are ectotherms, Pseudosuchians ancestrally had elevated mesothermic metabolisms. Even though they were the ancestors of crocodilians, Svenosuchians ironically had some of the highest metabolic rates within Pseudosuchia. Examination of Carnifex's bone histology found the indicators of its metabolic rate were more akin to those of Svenosuchians than to other similarly sized Pseudosuchians like the Rauosuchians. Besides allowing it to be more active, a high metabolism would have also enabled a swift growth rate, and the Carnifex holotype reached its length of 3 meters in perhaps as little as 3 years. Carnifex is one of the most basal crocodilomorphs, but it is not alone in that distinction. Its discovery led to the recognition of two others, Redonda venator, who is known from even less complete remains than those of Carnifex, and a more complete but as of yet undescribed skeleton from the Carnegie Museum of Natural History, labeled CM73372. Like Carnifex, both of these basal crocodilomorphs were large, terrestrial predators native to North America. The limited remains of Redonda venator are comparable in size to the Rauisuchid postosuchus. Although the Carnegie crocodilomorph was immature when it died, it was already bigger than any Sphenosuchian. One of the most basal Sphenosuchians, Hesperosuchus, was at best a meter and a half long, and the others rarely grew longer than a single meter. Whereas Carnifex and the more basal Loracotans were the Triassic equivalents of wolves and lions, Sphenosuchians have been likened to reptilian foxes. Carnifex and the other large basal crocodilomorphs have been described as invading the apex predator niches, but this framing is misleading. Their Rauisuchian ancestors had already been large carnivores for millions of years. The Triassic Loracotans who invaded new niches were the small Sphenosuchians. Since Carnifex possesses numerous unique features, it was an evolutionary uncle of the more derived crocodilomorphs rather than their direct ancestor. Additionally, fossils of a Sphenosuchian have been found in the Pekin Formation, demonstrating that they had already evolved by Carnifex's time. Potential prey of the Carolina Butcher includes the large Dicynodont Placerius and the herbivorous Pseudosuchian Revueltosaurus. Fossils of these two species have also been discovered in contemporaneous fossil sites in the southwestern United States. Other animals found in the Pekin Formation, such as the armored Agosaur Gorgetosuchus, have only been found in eastern North America. Fossils of the Rauisuchian Postosuchus allisonae have also been found in late Triassic North Carolina, but it lived 10 million years after Carnifex. Likewise, while early dinosaurs such as Herrerasaurus also lived 231 million years ago, they were still restricted to the southern hemisphere. 30 million years after the Carolina Butcher, at the very end of the Triassic period, Rauisuchians and basal crocodilomorphs like Redonda venator were still the top predators on land. However, nearly all Pseudosuchians perished during the end Triassic mass extinction, allowing for the rise of the dinosaurs. Although Carnifex and those like it have been gone for over 200 million years, their smaller descendants were the only Pseudosuchians which survived into the Jurassic period, leading to the Pseudosuchians of today. Thank you for watching, and a thank you to the Mandalorian for narrating this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to hit the like button, and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Finally, be sure to have a great day.